We are honored today to have Lou Leon Guerrero, the first woman to be elected governor of Guam and the first Pacific Islander woman to serve as governor of a U.S. territory or state to be our commencement speaker. Prior to her election in 2018, she served as president and chairwoman of the board of the Bank of Guam. During her 12 years with the bank, she expanded its network of branches to every island in Micronesia and led the bank to become a $2 billion institution. She also served five terms as a senator of the Guam legislature, championing le legislation that focused on improving health delivery services and quality of health care, including the Natasha Protection Act, which banned smoking in restaurants and bars. Her interest in health care as a lawmaker is rooted in her career as a nurse at the Santa Monica Hospital in California and at the Guam Memorial Hospital where she became the assistant nursing director. To this day, the governor is a registered nurse. She is also a founding member and, a, and the visionary behind the Guam Women's Chamber of Commerce, serving as its first president in 2014. She earned a bachelor's degree in nursing from California State University, Los Angeles, uh, a master's degree in public health from the University of California, Los Angeles. She is also a 2009 graduate of the Pacific Coast Banking School at the University of Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Imagahagan Guahan, the Honorable Lou Leon Guerrero. Buenas <laughs> and half a day. And congratulations to the graduates. Good evening, Chris Felix, Chair of the Board of Regents, President Tom Price of this great university, Dr. Anita Enriquez, Senators of the 35th Guam Legislature, Board of Regents, faculty and staff, and our great leaders of this great Government of Guam, honored guests and family and friends of these amazing people sitting right before us. I am indeed very honored and very proud today to be standing here to help celebrate your achievements and your success. Last month, during my first State of the Island address, I told the people of Guam that the state of our island is promising, that our economic, social, and educational future holds great promise. You are part of that promise because acquiring an education, learning the knowledge, and obtaining the skills required to earn a college degree is a promise. It is a promise to yourself to your children or your future children, and to the future of our island of Guam. You may not know what that promise holds you today. We can all plan, but none of us knows what the future holds for us. If someone had told me when I graduated from nursing school at California State University back in 1973, that I would one day become a senator in the Guam legislature and then the president of the bank my father had founded and then ultimately the first female governor of Guam, I probably would have asked them, what are you smoking? Seriously though, your promise is still in the making and it is being driven by the same force that compel you to study hard, to work intensely, and finally to earn the degree being conferred upon you tonight. Reaching the full potential of your promise will not be easy, but I want to offer you this piece of advice. Promise yourself to always be willing to learn, to seek new knowledge, and seek and embrace change. Do not be afraid to ask questions and seek answers of everyone and everything, because that is how you learn, how you grow as a person, 
and how you make things better. I can remember as a young girl in middle school, I challenged and questioned things that did not seem right to me, like, why couldn't I speak tomorrow in school? Or why were we given demerits when we spoke the language that our parents spoke and the language we used at home, our language? If none of us had questioned that move, our indigenous language might be dead today. But because people did not accept the ban on speaking tomorrow and instead question it, that action eventually raised awareness about the importance of preserving and perpetuating our language and our culture. Now we embrace the speaking and learning of tomorrow. Now we have the Chamorro Language Commission, a Chamorro Immersion School and a Chamorro Immersion Program in one of our public schools. All because people questioned the ban on speaking tomorrow. They asked why. When I was a teenager, I questioned my parents about why I had to stay home and clean the house while my brothers got to go outside and hang with their friends. Why I was not allowed to smoke at home when my brothers could. Why I couldn't go down to the river and swim while my brothers could. I did not accept the answer that it was because I was a girl. Although I didn't realize it back then, I was already learning to be a trailblazer because I did not want to accept what I thought was unfair and discriminatory. So I questioned it. When I went off to college, I joined women's consciousness groups. I became politically active. I advocated for the rights of women and fought for access to health care for all. This questioning, this thinking, and this curiosity influence our behaviors, our attitudes, and our mindsets. Those of you being awarded science-oriented degrees tonight know the importance of questioning things in order to ensure that you get the most accurate data and results. Questions lead to answers or to the discovery of facts and re sound reasoning that can lead to a change for the better. When I took over the Bank of Guam after cancer stole my brother, Tony, from us, I was new to the banking industry, so I asked questions of my senior managers. I knew they were more knowledgeable about the industry, and I took in their wise counsel. But when they told me something had been tried and had not worked, I questioned why. Then, from my fresh perspective, I would offer that maybe if we tried it a different way, we might get more positive results. Often, my suggestions worked, but the changes would not have happened if I had not been asking questions. Questions rock complacency. They often spur creativity or that aha moment. Believe me, as Magahaga, I ask a lot of questions of people. When we ask questions, we learn more, we become sure of ourselves, we become more confident in our decisions, our ideas, and our actions. We become more courageous, and we hold ourselves up stronger reinforcing our ability to conquer our fear of failure and achieve success in our lives. So promise to ask questions and also promise to listen when someone asks a question of you in your professional life and especially at home with your children. Promises take many forms and the promise of education for you is that you are now equipped with the knowledge and skills you have acquired from this great University of Guam to go out and make a difference. We have already seen some of that promise and the difference it has made in your work as graduate and undergraduate students. Thanks to the environmental science graduate students, we now have the first long-term study of the Northern Guam Lens Aquifer which answers questions about the freshwater storage capacity 
of our island's aquifer and its vulnerability to weather pa patterns. This is crucial information for all of us, including the managers at the Guam Water Works Authority as the aquifer supplies over 90% of our potable water. The 21 Masters of Public Administration graduates created a sexual misconduct awareness toolkit that provides important information for use in the classrooms, churches, and youth camps throughout the region. Guam has the unfortunate distinction of having one of the highest sexual assault rates per capita in the United States. So this toolkit will be extremely helpful for generating much needed conversations about sexual misconduct here on our island and around Micronesia. Awareness will go a long way towards stopping this crime. The graduates have even um, translated this toolkit into multiple Micronesian languages. All right. The 25 students graduating from the School of Education engage in action research to improve the classroom learning experience and address the importance of parental engagement in student achievement. They have also examined various aspects of our Chamorro language instruction in public school classrooms. Another group of students produced an innovative project in some examining Yahya's culture and dance, and another took an emotional and revealing look into the psychological impacts on families coping with cancer. All of these projects and many, many others at the graduate and undergraduate levels from the 388 people graduating today have already had direct and positive impacts in our community. Graduates, Sijus Masi for this outstanding work and for everything you have already done to improve life for our island communities. And congratulations to the University of, for having produced the single largest graduating class in the history of the University of Guam. I am so very proud of you. Many of you will soon be hired as professionals in our private companies or at our government offices. When you become employed, I ask you for your promise to help where you see the need for help, to speak up where you see the need for change or improvement, to respectfully question why something has been done a certain way for years when from your fresh perspective you may see a different and better way to accomplish it. To offer solutions to our island's problems where you see that something, a new policy, a new uh, program, or a new idea will work. To keep thinking creatively, scientifically, logically, and compassionately to develop new ways to make our island home the very best place to live. Right now, doors are opening on our island for new opportunities. UOG professors have developed a pathogen-free shrimp, which will help jumpstart our aquaculture industry here in Guam. Some of you could be the entrepreneurs that help this industry to take off and grow our economy in ways we have not yet imagined. Others could help develop biodegradable paper products using our own natural materials to help reverse the damage being done to our environment by styrofoam and other plastic garbage. You are only limited by your imagination right now. And for each and every one of you, your imagination is what holds you so much promise for your future and our future of our island as well. People are not born leaders. They become leaders by seeing a need for change or improvement and then by doing something about it. 
The promise of leadership is now in your hands. Earning your degree is the first step toward becoming a sustainable, productive member of our community. It is the first step toward being able to make a positive difference on our island, in our region of the Micronesia, and maybe even throughout the world. As I travel down this historic road as our first mega haga, my promise to you is to create a Guam that is fair, that is safe, that is compassionate and prosperous for everyone. My hope for you is that you take your promise as a University of Guam graduate with the power to make a difference, take the opportunities that we are working to provide and do something great with them. I was not born a leader, I became a leader because people saw promise in me. And tonight, I see promise in all of you. Undunklu Nesidus Masi, God bless you. God bless your families and friends. And God bless our island of Guam on this very promising future. Thank you.